So I think one of the coolest and most practical things you can ask GPT for to do for you is to write code. Uh, but a friend asked me recently, after you get code back from GPT-4, where do you run it? Which is a great question. So I'm just going to do a quick demo today. I'm going to ask GPT-4 to um, take a CSV file that I have, plot some graphs, write the Python code for it, and then I'll show you one of the ways in which you can just quickly run it and um, see what, what it's come back with. So first, we're going to give it the CSV file. This is a data set from Kaggle, um, which is a, a list of 2,000 customers that have shopped at a particular sh uh, supermarket. And uh, for each customer, it has information like the customer ID, uh, the year the person was born, marital status, education status, etc. So let's just ask, um, can, can you please write some Python code to visualize interesting graphs from this data set? Yes, of course, let's start by loading the data set and examining the first few rows. If you just like show work, you can see that it's, it's written some uh, Python. It's imported a library called pandas, and it's used pandas to read in the CSV file. And then looking at the first few uh, lines of the data set. And based on that, it has uh, come up with some ideas for potential visualizations. Um, it looks fine. We're just going to let it do its thing, and we'll come back to it when it's done. I think we have enough graphs for now. Can you um, aggregate all of the Python code and give, uh, give it to me? So now we're going to give it a bit of time to just dump out all the code as we asked for. Mm. And you can see here, it's, it's told us to remember to replace path to your file marketingcampaign.cfz with the correct path to your data set. That's very nice to remind us of that. So what you do is you copy the code and then the browser and type colab.research.google.com. What this is going to take you to is something like this. You click on new notebook. And this will take you to what is called a hosted Jupyter notebook. And Jupyter notebooks are terrific. They work a little bit like a Google Doc. So for example, if I, if I needed to have a, a title for my document, I... so what you can do is paste the code that you got from ChatGPT into here, and you can see a little, uh, little run button. You just click this and it'll run the code for you without you having to install anything on your own computer. So you just play it that it's come back with errors. See, it says it cannot file, uh, it cannot find this, this file. Remember, ChatGPT gave us a reminder that we needed to replace this. Well, that's because this code needs access to our file. How do we give it our file? Well, you can see here a little folder. This is your directory on Google Colab. And so what you do is just to give it Drag and drop the relevant files into here. You can create a folder. You know, for example, uh, maybe I want to make it a little neater. Just put in data and then drag this thing into it. And then I'm going to need to update this. 
There we go. So now it's running and it's come back with those graphs for us. And you can see this first graph, oh, let me just shrink it a little bit. This first graph is uh, age, it's an age distribution of the customers. And let's say if we wanted more granular bars, because this is all delivered as code, not as you know images, we can do whatever we want. We can do 1,000 bins, and then we can, let's say we want the bars in red, just play that again. Okay, you can see that's... So if I just um, quickly explain how Google Colab works. So you've got your laptop, and then you've got your browser, and in your browser, you're pulling open the Google Colab note notebook, and in there, you would run some... Uh, sometimes the code that... Uh, GPT gives you requires additional packages. It just so happens that the this all of these packages are already pre-bundled inside the default notebook. But if you needed to use a special library, then you might need to install uh, some something here. And in that case, um, so you need to install something, and then you'll need to run your code. But actually. Even though you're doing all of this on your laptop, none of it, none of it is really happening on your laptop. Um, what it's doing is just a window. It's a window into what's happening in your remote temporary space on Google servers. And so there's some space for you here. It's temporary. And so your Python actually runs on this machine. And so this machine needs to have access to whatever files the the code needs access to. So when you upload it here, it's saving it here. And then also any packages that are in, installed are installed within this, this environment. So the code is running here and then whatever output it has, it will send it back to this front end to display to you. And so this is a really great tool because you don't need to install anything on your own laptop. Um, the downside is that it's a temporary space. So if you, you can save the notebook, um, so it'll be there for you next time. So for example, if you just give it a name, it'd be like a uh, supermarket pops, then it'll be there next time. But um, if, you, uh, if you had to install packages um, as part of your, your initialization, then you'll need, need to do it all over again with each session because uh, the space goes away after a while. Like if, if you don't use the, if you don't run your notebook, then this temporary space disappears. And then you'll have to re-upload your files and then reinstall the packages. But I think it's okay, an okay price to pay to keep your own laptop clean. So that's how you run code that GPT gives you.